Well, good morning and uh, welcome everybody to the ordinary meeting of the Pahara Domain Governance Committee. Um, I think we've got most people here now. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa, panamo te moana, te huarahi matato i te rangi nei, araha atu, araha mai, tato ia tato katoa. Kia ora. We, Kia ora. we have um, one apology today from Rick Ferrari, which I would like to move. Can I have a seconder to accept that apology? Yes. Yep. Uh, Councillor Joyce Pucky, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. And then we are moving to the confirmation of the um, agenda as circulated. Happy to move that. Can I have a seconder, please? Yep, I'll second it. Oh. Mayor, Mayor Smith. Sunny. Oh, thanks, Sunny. Sunny. Seconded by yep. Sunny. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. We're next moving to the conflict of interest declaration. Does anyone have any conflicts of interest that they would like to declare for today's meeting? No, thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the confirmation of the committee minutes for the 9th of November 2021 as circulated. Does anyone um, have any comment on that? No. Okay, would someone like to move that they're a true and correct record? Mia Smith, thank you, and seconded by? Aye. Councillor Joyce Pucky, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carried. Okay, we are now moving to our one main and reasonably large item of business today, which is the Taharoa Domain quarterly report for November 2021 to January 2022. And we have a recommendation here only just to, to note that report, which I'm happy to move. And can we have a seconder for that, please? Karen, thank you, yep. Councillor Joyce Pucky. Um, now, just before we go to that, um, I circulated um, over the weekend an email that I received from a member of the public asking some questions um, relating to the DLG work. And um, given the, the long wait weekend and the shortage of time from the agenda being released, um, the information hasn't been able to have been um, sought from the DLG group. but. Um, that is in process and so um, answers to those questions that were asked um, will be sought and will come back and will be um, distributed to the committee and to um, the, the member of the public that was asking some questions um, via me as the chair so um, that's um, unfortunately as far as we could go with that um, given the short time frame but it will be um, dealt with um, so we'll move on to um, the report now and um, Nadine, I think the floor is yours. Thank Welcome. you. Morena, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'll be delivering the report for this meeting as Darlene's currently on leave. Um, firstly, I take the report as read um, and happy to take any questions. And if there's anything I don't know, I'll make a note and Darlene or myself will get back to you. Okay, thanks, Nadine. What I might do is just in... Um, we, we might just go around the room um, a couple of times so everyone has a full opportunity to ask their questions having read the report. Mm -hmm. um, and we might do that a couple of times so that anything else that arises can be fully covered as well. Um, just on my screen, I've got um, Councillor Joyce Pucky and Mia Smith and uh, Sunny um, down the bottom there. So um, I'll just go around the room in that order to start with. If you've got any questions, and we'll come back around again. So over to you, uh, Councillor Joyce Pucky. Cool. 
Mori na whanau, um, kia ora for the for the report. It, it is a lengthy report um, and there's a few things that are jumping out to me and I apologise because I can't seem to split my screen so I'm having to jump back and forward to one so I can visually see you guys and then to read it. So um, if if you don't mind, um, yeah, there was a lot in this report. And one of the things I think for me was the stuff that popped up around COVID and how how we, <clears throat> I'm trying to find it now, how, how it, it talks about how we're down in um, revenue for the month. Um, well, for this period, because we weren't able to, or well, some of those, some of those current um, bookings were cancelled. So, is that? I'm keen to know what the impact is of that. If we haven't met our target, potentially, where does additional funding come from? If we're not, if we're not making the money or generating the money that we normally do over the Christmas period. Sorry, I know there was something in here, but I'm just struggling to find it now. No, that's okay. So for the for the period up to, if we compare it to the same time last year, it was approximately twenty five thousand less. Um, however, the the revenue, or currently the revenue from the campground, um, goes back into a pool of funds. Um, it, it isn't actually used to for operations at this stage. I know that is something that Darwin was working, working on going forward. So the answer to your question is no impact. No, no impact. Cool. If you want to move along, um, Councillor Larson, I'm sure I'll yeah. have some more once I figure out my screen. Okay, no trouble. We'll move move to uh, Mia Smith. Have you got some questions regarding this report, please, Mia Smith? Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, morena koutou. Uh, I, I'd just like to start um, with the um, sad reflection here uh, about the death, uh, and I'd just like to acknowledge that, the, the death of the young um, a child um, who drowned. Um, and so I'm just acknowledging that at, at here at the start of this um, section um, and uh, acknowledging uh, the work of um, Snow and the team from Tororo uh, in placing a, a short rahui for a 24 hour period over the area um, where the drowning occurred. So just acknowledging all of that and thank you to everyone from Tororo and to the public for um, their uh, great support and to all of the council team who worked in that new year period in this very tragic moment. Um, but I'd like to move on now, Mr Chairman, with um, a further list of um, issues that, and things that are raised in this report. Um, the, the June Lake Galaxia Science Group, I'll come back to this at the end, but it's near the top of the report, all right, but I will return to this later. I'll just go through some other issues. Um, I'm interested uh, in the temporary alcohol control area, which is flagged in the report and then is flagged at the end as being work that's coming up. Uh, I'm just, all I'd just say for now is I'm interested in that, all right, and, and it, I'm just highlighting that. Thank you, and I'll just move on. The um, um, also looking at that traffic counter, uh, which, and the the notions of what the tools are that are counting the people who are visiting um, the the entire domain. Um, you know, traffic counter is vehicles only. But if a vehicle's got six people in it, would you just count the one vehicle, or do you count six? You know. It, it, vehicles is, Mr. is, is part so, Mr. Mayor, could, could, could we just take ask as many questions as you'd like but if we could just take them one at a time and get Nardine to respond okay that'd sure. be really great perfect thank you sorry so, so, 
Oh, sorry. So the um, I so I guess the temporary alcohol control area will will come to that probably later in the report. I guess, but the... no, just, every, every, everything's fine. So any questions you want to ask during the question period, if you could just ask them of Nadine, and we'll cover them off now as we go. Okay, all right. You've so, seen the whole report. Thank you. Okay, so the simple thing is your temporary alcohol control area. Nadine, from the perspective, just from a policy development perspective, when would you expect that to come through uh, and be being worked through? Does it get worked through by this committee or does it become part of just operations of council or is there a full council process like the alcohol bylaws? Um, I, I'm so I've just got a, a policy related question around that. How big a piece of work is that? Um, and does it fit in with other parts of the governance and policy framework of the council? Um, yeah, and so just kind of, I, I, I'm not after a full breakdown, but I'm just kind of saying, yeah, it's going to be six months of work and we're going to be starting it in April. That's the kind of answer I'm after from you, Kilda. Okay, so um, it is a so um if some of you may recall we actually tried to do this last year in in preparation for for crate day um however learnt um from that experience that there is quite a bit involved and one of the key things that we were missing was evidence um to support our application for the temporary control um and that when we took advice from our alcohol licensing specialist um fiona and following I guess Darling returning from leave will be continuing with our review of the entire operation of the campground and domain over the peak period and that's when we'll begin working. So we, in answer to your question, we'll be working on it within the next month. That's when we'll be starting it and then taking advice from Fiona as we go through. But we did collate a lot of um, a lot of the evidence that was asked of us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And so at this point, it's... it's um, has a focus area on the calendar regarding crate day, mm -hmm. not, not, uh, and I'm not holding you to this, but not being a permanent temporary alcohol control area, like, oh, every day is Correct. now. Yeah. Correct. So, now, so if it was permanent, okay. it would be alcohol control, yeah, it would be under the alcohol control by law, but we're only seeking yes. it for that crate day period. Thank you very much. That's perfectly clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so moving on. So the uh, traffic counter and um, that's being implemented. Are there, are there any, any other groovy tools to actually count the number of people? Like, um, like I'm sure, because Megan's here from Northern Regional Council, NRC may have a drone that could fly over on certain days and literally take count the dots of the people um, as they're all swimming in the water and so on and so on and so on and actually count how many people are there um, as against just the vehicle counter. Do we have do we have a whole approach to how to do that in a cool way? Um I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, as I said, we've well with the traffic counter, what we're aiming to do. So we understand that there will be a, you know, we left to allow for a percentage of error, and also allowing for people who aren't actually visiting the domain, um, people who actually reside in the area. Um, there'll be where I guess the idea is is that we would have um, an average amount of occupants in a vehicle, um, but we haven't. At the moment, we have just we have identified that we do need to know an exact number because the numbers that we've been provided is a best guess, mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah. So that's kind of the starting point in and the easiest one to implement at this stage. But that's not to say that we won't find um, another system that may be more fit for purpose once we okay. continue with the investigation. Thank you. So it's a beginning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's clear. Thank you. Um, um, moving on, the uh, I, I'm noting on page eight of the report, still on page eight. Sorry, um, 
to discuss with NRC the budget for um, plant pest control, animal and plant pest control has been reduced to 17,000 due to commitments in other areas of biosecurity. And there's been a reprioritization of those funds. Um, only funding for animal pest control and no weed control will be able to be funded. Has there been any report done about what the absence of weed control will do for next year, the state of the weeds, if you like, if we have catch up that's required then? That's not something that I can answer. I, um, I just don't know whether Megan wants to um, possibly pick up on that question and provide a response. Um, yep, sure. So um, there's not a report detailing what um, one year of missed weed control will do, but there, there is an operational um, plan that's been written up um, sort of outlining the priority areas for weed control at the domain. And with that COVID money that was received, um, was it last financial year? And they had a team, um, team working at the lakes. They had started working through that, but with any weed control, uh, ongoing um, maintenance and follow-up of those areas worked as always, um, you know, it's really needed um, each year just to stay on top of it. Cause there is, there are areas with high you know, weed species, acacias and um, and wattles and everything like that at the lake. So, um, yeah, there had been, I guess there's, yeah, there's just, yeah, not the funding to sort of, I guess, support, um, yeah, to follow on from that work that was done with that COVID funding that um, KDC um, helped um, uh, managed um, last year. Um, so, there may be a little bit of a backward steps in terms of keeping on top of the good work that was done. Um, yeah. And that's the, that's the problem with weed controllers. If you don't, yeah, staying mm. on top of it is key. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. So I guess, I guess, um, uh, thank you, Megan, that, that uh, that's very clear. And I think we're all aware of, especially, I mean, if you look at the rain right now and this is beautiful, beautiful, every weed will be like, bolting out of the ground right now the um um so i guess is there a this is a bigger question um is there a weed control strategy for um for uh Tahiro domain in general um which every party is leaning into um is that part of of where we are headed to um and if so where where does this um reduction to zero dollars in funding um where, do, where does it leave us so it's um, a double question, really. yeah uh, so yeah the purpose of that operational plan that heavy focus of us of it is we control um and that is sort of i guess um you know uh the Bible from which KDC and NRC can work to, um, depending on who's doing what, where, um, you know, but working towards those same goals of key species that need to be managed um, and where, you know, where quick wins can be made and where some larger, you know, um, say with the wild and pines, you know, that will that will require larger outside funding to to sort of deal with um, some you know those those issues that still need to be tidied up. So, um, so yep. In terms of a strategy, I guess there is that operational plan that and and we have been. It's been really good um, for the last few years working closely with the KDC team and and making the plan and um, trying to make sure um, yeah we both sort of both organisations know what we're each up to. Um, so those communications have been happening. Um, I think going forward, there's the conversations to be had about looking at um, NRC's ongoing um, funding of the domain, since that is actually, um, it's sort of a different situation where 
Um, we're funding work on public administered um, reserve land when normally um, NRC funding is focused on private land. So those um, preliminary conversations have been had with some of the team um, what that might look like and it would be looking at um, how NRC could support the surrounding landowners to start doing animal um, weed and um, pest animal and plant pest control on the private land and then look at KDC's role on the domain. Um, yes, just so that we could achieve um, bigger results with having a wider landscape, um, you know, doing control and, uh, and get those benefits for the, for the domain. Um, so that's sort of the bigger picture stuff to sort of that we need to work through and, and um, with the, with the um, landowners around the lakes as well um, and then with the team at KDC too. Thank you. That's very clear. Very clear answer. Um, that's that's helpful. Thank you, uh, Megan. Um, my final question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's mention here in the upcoming work program, which is page nine of the report, which is a really good summary box, uh, summary set of information. The next quarter activity. Um, um, is it's really really nice to see thank you um the the notion of a wish list for projects um so is that wish list is that or is that going to be drawn from the uh current strategy is this who are the stakeholders for that wish list for projects how does that wish list for projects fit with the council long term plan, which is for the next decade? Uh, and which is, if you like, all the operations of the council. So, so I'm just, I'm just flagging, if you like, a question here around um, a wish list for projects would have been great if it had come together 18 months ago and it mm -hmm. kind of did to be included in the LTP um, because I'm concerned that we may be raising expectations in doing a wish list for projects, which may be in contrast to the plans that the council already has in place and importantly, the budgets that council already has for, um, for Taharo domain. So, um, could 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 I just have a bit more clarity around the notion of this wish wish list for projects and who's involved going to be involved in that? Mm -hmm. um, so the idea there is um, given that we've now completed, I think I can say we've completed the peak, our first real peak season of both the domain um, and the campground now being under Darlene's portfolio, the customer experience portfolio. Um, we having a number of um, reviews with staff, so the domain and lakes campground staff contractors are there just to see like in an ideal world what you know what's actually missing what um, you know, what are things that we can do to improve the operations basically of both the domain and the campground. Um, also keeping in mind things that have been put in the reserve management plan that possibly haven't been touched on or haven't been completed. Um, alongside um, the, I think the, the couple of capex pro, or actually no, one capex project. So just having a look at the big picture now that we actually know what it looks like from a portfolio perspective and having a better understanding of it. But it is just that, it, and I think that's an appropriate term that it is a wish list in an ideal world. And then let's now um, put it against the long term plan and the reserve management plan, etc. Thank you. Thank you. So supplementary question here. So who, so this is to be compiled uh, internally by the, the council officers. So it's yeah. not about public um, input at, at this stage. It's not seeking that because the public input's already been done. So it's actually yes. kind of a a scan, if you like, of the all the existing documents to go, oh, where are all the things and let's put them all back together again, compile them into a short list of things. Exactly. Kind and of, yeah. darling. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's clear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Those were my questions. Kia ora.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Sonny, are you there, Sonny? Yes, I'm here. Yep. Yep. Did, did you have any initial questions that you'd like to ask um, of Nadine or of Megan? Ones, yep. Most of the initial ones have already been um, spoken to. Okay. Um, there's just a couple of the, the, the one that I was really concerned about was was uh, really the, the amount of deaths we're having each year, and uh, and and uh, and is there a you know a safety program in regards to 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 the swimming areas, in regards to uh, uh, I don't know uh, even life safety lifeguards, um, you know because it just seems to be happening on a regular basis. I remember I did the first one that would be going right back in about 2000, 2011 and we never had one for five years and then mm. it just started again. Uh, and uh, and it just happens, seems to be happening every year. So I would like to know what the strategy is around about about um, uh, removing that, those risks. Um. I'm just trying to think the best way to answer that question. So it is, yeah, I don't, I, yeah it's not something that I can actually answer for you now. No, Sorry, no, Sunny. No, um, what I'm no, no, do is, not an yeah, easy one. yeah, and I, I think because there's a number of things that we're we're currently doing, but I I wouldn't say it's a strategy as such at this stage. Um, we will be we're obliged to answer questions and provide information um, for. A coroner's report every time there is unfortunately a drowning at the lakes i mean yeah. off of that comes recommendations and um, that's still in the process of happening um therefore that's something that we would need to take into consideration of what it looks like going forward there's a few operational things that we're, we're, we're looking at um but as i said it's not really a strategy but i'm happy to talk to darling when she's back and then get you um a bit more information if that's okay yes, so I know that we are a specific area, and yet, uh, yet, uh, whether whether this is on in the water or on the land, and there's there's, there's no there's no real um, process that's been mm -hmm. given that's been taken as, as absolutely uh, ticker way to do it, you know. And I, I actually think that it should be. Going back and actually have some sort of uh, formal process that's required because uh, not everyone will be think thinking the same in regards to uh, uh, the mana of the lakes, the Māori of the lakes, and the tapu of the lakes. You know, mm. And not everyone will be thinking the same. So to me, there should be some sort of uh, process that that's uh, formally. Formally adhered to, because you know, um, way I know it, anyone can go up to that lake and and do the blessing, and do the fakawati, do the tuku. I see we've had uh, uh, Mr. Maris appear on our screen. Did you have something to add to the um, answers here, Mr. Maris? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, and and Sunny, yeah, it's a very good point. Um, I just wanted to assure the committee. Uh, that uh, there is a strong protocol in place that staff follow when there is a drowning, a sad drowning, of course. Um, so there is, there's definitely a protocol in place. Uh, what we probably need to do to reflect your feedback, Sunny, uh, is as part of our protocol is to touch base with Tororo and uh, and seek advice and guidance on how to deal with that particular circumstance as well. Um, and so we, we definitely did that uh, for this occurrence too. Uh, but reflecting what you're saying, um, there possibly needs to be a bit more stronger guidance in that space to help Tororo or Iwi uh, to help us, actually. But I, I would say each, sadly, uh, each drowning is quite different characteristics uh, and we have to take a bit of a pragmatic sort of case by case um, scenario with it as well. So I just want to add that. Thank you, Mr. Maris. Did you have some further uh, questions to ask, um, Sonny, at this stage? Well, I, I think they should be actually put into put, uh, put into some formal protocol. 
you know, uh, in, in regards to, to, to the, the tuku, the, the blessings and everything like that, you know, they come they come through. And and even if it's just stated that a protocol will be followed will be followed by by local I, uh, iwi and Komatua. Kia ora. Because it's you know um, who's doing it, you know, you you go and do it or you go and do it, you know, and 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 the body one is available at at that uh, precise time. <clears throat> so if the I can police just... actually have their the police actually have their own one um, that that goes and, and does all the tuku uh, but they don't put the rahui on. Very difficult to section the part off and rahu it because the lake is the lake is all one. Uh, through you, so Mr. Chief, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to respond again. I, I, I agree, uh, absolutely. Um, we need to make sure one of our actions as part of our debrief is to, is to work with Iwi. I think one of the improvement things that we could do um, to add to our protocols document is to to have a protocol document from Iwi, perhaps, or some thoughts in that space uh, also. Um, and, and I think one of the improvements we could do is actually have somebody listed uh, from Iwi on call, for example, over that period, like we do with our staff uh, too, because um, you know, as it happened, we 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 had to make a few phone calls to get hold of somebody um, yeah. to to help us out in that space. So you're right, that would be that would be a good added improvement that we could uh, we could add to to our processes. Kia ora. Thank you, Mr. Maris. Did you have any other questions you wanted to ask? Um, Sonny of Nardine before we move on uh, back to Karen. I, I, th I think that was the one that sort of yep. really concerned, concerned me the most because, okay. you know, um, I've been rung up a, a few times and I just haven't wanted to go. No. I haven't wanted to go because because it's just happening too often. You know, and, and, and we, we, we really need to actually do something about that. Why are people drowning in our lakes? You know, what what is it? Uh, is, our, is, our, is our safety awareness great, uh, great enough? Our, our risk management plans in regards to, to freedom for freedom swimming areas, uh, free swimming areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Kia ora. Um, I, I did have a couple of other questions just to ask if that's okay but yeah, just, away. Yep. just some feedback on that too you know this year or the end of last year into this year we've had a significant amount of deaths water deaths um how do you control that Who, look we're an island surrounded by water you mm. know we're a people that it's been incredibly hot everyone's been just it's been like a giant magnet to go and swim in those places. So there's a responsibility on the individual, the whānau, us as a community. You can put every safety measure in place and still have incidents. So, you know, ka nui te aroha to that whānau. It was, it was really sad. And like you say, I've, you know, the police get rung. I get notified. We we find out that tragedies happened in our rohe and then we do our best to deal with it because they happen at times when people are on holiday you know these these drownings unfortunately have not been locals they've been people visiting our space yeah. um so how do you manage that that's that's a wananga in itself who you know how do we how do we manage that but it's I'll it's a good right. it's a good korero um well, i just don't just, know that we'll find the answer even just knowledge and advertising about the about the about the density of the water, you know, it'll take oh. it'll take you down if you can't stay on top. It's as simple as that. You yeah, know, there's it, been a lot, lot of changes. Yeah, a lot of changes in the water. Hey, um, if if I can move us on, I do want to talk about the water take because I see that we didn't exceed our water take this year. I just wonder if that's because we didn't have the numbers. And I'm a little bit confused because the numbers up there seem to be colossal this year. Like, 
um, I didn't even go because I just could count the hundred cars passing our driveway heading to the lakes. It was incredible how many people were traveling up there with toys and blow up blow up toys and what have you. But um, so we didn't exceed the water take. Is that because we've had an increase in the amount of water take we're allowed or is it the same? Did we deal with that issue, did we? Because I know we've been exceeding it in the past. Megan, have you? The, another, I don't know, I don't necessarily need the answer for that, but if you come back to us, mm -hmm. um, there was some concerns raised around water take from local farms around the area that have that are allowed or have some sort of handshake consent from 100 years ago to tap into that water supply. Um, I know that Darlene, I sent an email to Darlene to ask her if she could follow up on that and give us um, an update or at least the landscape of what that looks like because that lake, those lake levels are the lowest I've seen them ever. Um, so where are we with that? I also know there's some discussions going on about the waka ama and using the event centre to store their waka underneath. There is some sort of formal agreement or a discussion that needs to play, take place about um, the appropriateness of that and whether they can continue to do it. So that was another piece of mahi that Darlene mm -hmm. um, was working on that um, I'm not sure where we've got to with it. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a note in there around the cultural impact assessment and that there'll be some looking into documents or previous reports to pull pull a piece of work together. Mm. Um, I don't know what your take on that is, um, Matua Sunny, but um, a cultural impact assessment is generally done by Iwi. by those that are um, affected, as in mana whenua. So I'm... I'm interested to see what that space looks like for um, who will be commissioned to write the cultural impact assessment. And my thoughts are it would be Te Kuihi or, or Te Rorua, um, not us going through documents. Um, yeah. And, and I'm a little bit surprised that we don't, we must have, is it out of date? Or do we just not have a cultural impact assessment for the lakes, which would go into that mate space, matua around, you know, um, protection mm -hmm. of, you know, those cultural values, tikanga yep. around mate. It's, it's one of those things that would be captured inside that document. There's also no fire plan, fire management plan, which surprises me for the lakes. Um, in the comms and into plan, just things that are highlighted red in the um, actions task sheet. I'm wondering how we can progress that stuff to get them to a amber or a green. And is it budget wise? Is it capability? What is it that's holding us back to be able to do that stuff? So just just to just to um, cover these things off then. Um, can we just answer these um, around the cultural impact assessment for Councillor Joyce Pucky and the, um, the the second point she has about the fire plan? Are you able to respond to that at all, Nadine, or do you need to come back? I'll, I'll need to come back on, on those, but um, okay. yeah, definitely on all the items that are flag read, as you said, um, we'll get your response. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Yep. Have you got some more questions, um, Councillor Joyce Pucky? No, no, that's it. That's covered off on that. Okay, thank you. Now, I, I just want to um, come back to a couple of points that have been raised myself, and and one um, was a, a um, pertinent point um, raised earlier on by Councillor Joyce Parkey around the financials um, for the campground, and um, you know, it's been indicated that um, separating out the campground operations from um, other funding so that we can see the performance more clearly. Um, as something that's coming. Um, if we could just um, sort of have some sort of a time frame around when we're expecting to see that more clearly would be um, very uh, useful for next time. Is that something we could perhaps have come back to the next meeting, Nadine? Yep, absolutely. I can do that. That'd be great. 
Just a little curiosity for me also is uh, on the water takes uh, can sense the difference between the take and the discharge is quite significant. Is that the amount of water that is going out of the campgrounds and people's bladders every day or um, how does that quite work? Do we, if we were to use our full water take, um, would we have a problem with our discharge at 12 and a half cubes less per Sorry, it's in the it's in it's in the I'll, I'll pull up the report. I think it's about page eight or so. Page eight. Page seven. You've got a um, water take which uh, you cannot exceed fifty cubes per day, and the um, discharge is thirty seven and a half cubes per day. If we were to exceed our daily water take, would we end up inadvertently exceeding our discharge or is there some reason why we would have that much water going out elsewhere i'll need to get you a response um to that councillor unless uh, megan is able to provide one from nrc uh, um no sorry that's yeah that's a different area to what i normally work in but i could make queries, inquiries with the members of the team and from Whangarei that um, deal with the water take. Okay, thanks for that, um, Megan. What, what I'm going to do now is go um, back around the room for any further questions arising from the discussion so far and, and also any other matters that um, have arisen. Um, and so um, the last to speak was uh, Mia Smith, so I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Mia. Thank you. Oh, look, uh, kia ora. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, quickly, I mentioned at the beginning about the Dune Lake Galaxias and this item on page, I'm calling it page eight, page three of the report, page eight of the overall agenda, um, but page three of the report. Um, I'll, 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 um, I'm, I'm very concerned here uh, that this that the normal method, if you like, of counting the um, galaxias has so far produced a low count, um, and I'm very, very concerned in this space because um, one of the issues is going to turn into a speech. One of the issues that we have is we don't know how quickly the June Lake Galaxias may in fact um, reach a tipping point and become extinct uh, if things if the balance goes wrong or the with it with the, uh, the the fish in the lake. So um, my simple question is um, what and when uh, when is the report going to come that says this is how many fish we estimate now to be in the lake knowing that this lines up with exactly the same method that was used in the past so that's a consistent thing um, because i'm just very keen to make sure that we don't let these fish go extinct from this environment kilda Simple question, probably, I, I, so I don't know who can speak to this, Mr. Chair, but it's when will we get a report on this and, uh, and yeah, yeah, when are we going to get a report? Is it between now and the next meeting? Is it, is it outside the meeting process? Would we need to have an extraordinary meeting uh, if the numbers are proven to be dropping like this report says the numbers are, are low. So what does that what does it mean? Like what does it mean? Because low if suddenly oh well there's none anymore. Oh well these numbers are still really low now. Like super low. So I'm I'm concerned here, Mr. Chairman, and I'm just keen to know what the the uh for this committee what we will see and be doing. Kia ora. 
Um, so any inquiries relating to the um, Dune Lake Hill access will be sent through um, to that team for a response, um, Mr. Mayor. And yeah, and then we will provide information back to the committee then. But that's one of the things that we will put to them is yeah, when when can we when can we expect a report? Cool. Can I, Nadine, if, if, if we could perhaps just have that come back as a, as a matter of urgency rather than to the next meeting, as the Mayor has quite correctly echoed, there is considerable concern around this issue. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the last thing this Council and this committee want to see is, a, is a, um, an extinction on our hands as a result of inaction. So, um, yeah, it's yep. timely that we do push on. Thank you. Absolutely. Councillor Joyce Parkey. Oh, kia ora. Um, thank you. Thanks for raising that, Mayor Smith. Um, yeah, I'm keen to see it come back in a way that we might be able to see stats, like if they can give us that date stamp of when this when, when, when they started, or at least even over the last three years prior to, you know, us yeah. doing, doing the trout release, if they can sort of break down and show us the incline or decline or whatever it is that starts to map it out in a picture sense that becomes you know valuable for us to share with our community because everybody's watching all eyes mm -hmm. are on us because we made a call and um this is not a ploy for you know trout release in the future this is just saying this is one of the methods or steps that we took precautions we put in place and this is what it looks like thus far and that's not to say that that, that um that decline wouldn't have happened anyway mm -hmm. that's just so that we can visually see things on the map Yes, um, to, to, to the chair, I'd like, I'd like to take up with that, uh, that it wasn't actually a question by the sound of it, but uh, uh, the data we've been asking for for years in regards to um, um, compar comparative da data, and we've never had any, and now all of a sudden we're getting it um, based based on mostly, mostly a busy season, where fish aren't going to mm -hmm. hang around where people are anyway, and, and, um, and we're, get, we're getting tests. Um, uh, a method that doesn't doesn't uh, we don't know what the accuracy of the data of the test is. The testing uh, process, you know, um, so it's really quite um, unreliable, if, uh, especially given the times that they're taken. I'd, I would say, you know, and and to, to say that they're, they're they're depleted, depleted from what? What what was what was the initial count? We got nothing to compare with. So I'm really quite ang angry, angry about that, saying that the numbers are dropping when when where's the comparison data? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sunny, for that. Um, does, do you have any further questions to ask of Nadine um, before we move on, Sunny? Well, that that was the biggest thing. Was where is the comparison person data? What's the accuracy of, of the of the data that we are getting? And and, uh, and can a can a uh, assumption or can a uh, an inaccurate um, analysis be done on numbers? Thanks for that. So, so is that clear, Nadine, of what yes. what what to come back. Thank you. And back to you again. Uh, uh, Councillor Joyce Pucky, do you have any further questions arising from what's come up here now? No? Okay. Everyone's clear. Everyone's had plenty of opportunity to question and discuss and, and uh, state a little bit as well. Thank you. Um, so we will move on to speeches now. Um, and um, yeah, Nadine, thanks very much for um, um, being there through that. And, uh, um, acting up capacity and for Megan to be there to answer the questions for us as well. It is quite a thorough report. I think we've got some quite serious issues there that have been raised today and I certainly echo um, some of the concerns raised around the DLG issue um, as, as well as um, some of these things that we're seeing in this very good growing season um, with uh, weed control which can totally get away on us and end up with a problem that we um, don't have budget to deal with. So. Um, very timely that we're discussing these things right now. Uh, thank you. And uh, on to uh, Karen, uh, Councillor Joyce Pucky. Thank you. Cool. Um, just in summary, thank you very much to the team for pulling together that lengthy report. I actually reckon that's the best one I've seen to date. 
um, with so much information. My only request would be that DOC now have a part to play in this, um, leading that the LD Science Group, and it would be really cool to have a standing invitation to a DOC representative to come and speak to that, um, so that you don't have to go around chasing up, chasing up someone else's work. Um, but yeah, I've I've enjoyed reading through it, the the sad and and the celebrations. I, I know that it was a chaotic year up there. We had that COVID um, location of interest breakout. You know, things things could have gone really pear-shaped, but it looks like the team done an incredible job to get us through to this point. And now the numbers are starting to decrease up there. So yeah, well done. Something to celebrate, team. Kia ora. Thank you. I'll pass that feedback onto the team. Thank you. Mayor Smith, would you like to speak at all? Uh, kia ora. So yes, a, a brief statement from me. I'd like to echo what Councillor Joyce Parkey has just said about the um, the readability of the report that we've received here. Uh, it's very comprehensive. Um, one of the uh, key matters for me here is the subject of um, the drownings that are occurring uh, and that I see as a piece of ongoing work uh, for the council with other partners, including uh, NRC and potentially the Surf Life Saving New Zealand uh, regarding uh, the Kaiwi um, lakes as a whole. But um, we have a public education challenge really in this space so and we can't fix that with our mega budgets here um we have of course a great jewel and a very very popular place and it's proven to be very popular this summer even with the covid lockdowns when other places were uh, not so popular uh and so uh, the uh, if you like the maori of tahoroa is still very strong uh, and uh, and the attraction of the place uh, is is uh, remains undimmed, and that's a wonderful thing. It's also a real challenge for us because we have uh, re limited resources with which to be dealing with increasing amounts of pressures, uh, and we're seeing that. I'm very concerned, therefore, here in in conclusion about. The uh, the June Lake Galaxias group um, and the the issues, the ongoing issues with that, uh, and the ongoing risk of the extinction of those fish, uh, and the uh, the challenges uh, for the entire space um, there, um, which is a, a, a headline issue to me. Um, so sadly, uh, my um, uh, corridor here is 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 overshadowed by um, issues of, um, of of sadness and grief and um, uh, and loss and death and uh, so but I, I acknowledge all of that and just go uh, we have a wonderful wonderful place and with the light comes the dark and and is a real challenge for us all. And we need to be leading very, very clearly and um, deliberately for our community and all of the people who love Taharoa Domain. So we have an interesting couple of months ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kia ora. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sunny, did you want to speak to this motion at all? Are you there, Sonny? Sorry, I was speaking away to, to with my with my microphone on. All right, that's no trouble. Just, just try it. Start again. Yeah, Thank I'm you. Very, very pleased with very pleased with the report. The report has been quite comprehensive. Um, a few things missing, and it's it, it missing based based on uh, based on that nothing has actually been done about the things that have been reported um, in regards to uh, it could be policy, uh, policies protocols. Um, Customs, etc., etc. Um, I, I, I noticed uh, 
the risk management plan was was really quite well done, um, and I was really quite pleased. Okay, thank you, Sonny. All right, well, I'm going to put this motion up now. We are, we are voting on the motion that um, the committee notes the Tahara Domain Quarterly Report for November 2021 to January 2022. All those favour, say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Motion carried. Kia tōna manakitanga a te mea naro. Ki runga, ki tena, ki tena, o tato, ki mahia, ti hua, ma kihi kihi, kia, toiti kupu, toiti mana, toiti aroha, toiti rio Māori, tihei Māori ora. Thank you everybody for your attendance, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Tēnā koe tūnā. Bye Māori. And the meeting has stopped live streaming and is not recording any longer. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.